In this video, let's dive into what's new in Flutterflow for August and September. First up, we have our splash screen upgrade. Splash screens help welcome new users and offer a polished look as your app loads. In our new update, you can now set the minimum duration for your splash screen to be visible. Configure the background color shown before your splash screen loads and disable splash screens from being visible on the web. With these enhancements, you have the power to create a more engaging and personalized experience for your users. Next, we can now support hero animations for components. Hero animations are a special effect that makes a transition from one screen to another look smooth and seamless. You can toggle on the hero animation on any component. In order to give this component different properties depending on which page it is on, I've added a boolean local state variable and set up design changes depending on the component's location. Now, in order to set up this feature, toggle on the hero animation once a component is selected and add a hero tag. Then on the second page of your app, add the same component, enable user hero animation, and select the same hero tag. Finally, add navigation from page one to page two. The best part is you can execute this flow with any component, which opens up a large range of possibilities. Next up, we have some big new upgrades to tab bars. Tab bars help organize your content in different sections, allowing users to quickly switch between content shown. First up, tab bars now support widget state, so you can toggle the tab state alive. This will allow you to maintain the state and preserve user input, scroll positions, or data from an API call. Next, you can also now define an unselected font style to customize your tab bar even further. This will allow you to create custom tab styles when you need to add new features. Lastly, we've added a new change tab action. You can add this to any widget. First, find the control tab bar action. Set the tab bar to control to the appropriate name, and then finally select the desired action type. Now, when you press the widget, the tab bar should be able to execute the action that you have selected. We've added three new features to help you further customize and elevate your application. First is auto size text upgrade. You can now set minimum and maximum font sizes for auto size text. Once you toggle this on, you can enter the minimum font size and the maximum font size will be determined by the base font size entered. You can set a color for scroll bars. You can now set a custom scroll bar color that aligns with your brand colors and you can define the thumb color, its visibility, the length, and other specifications. Next up, we've added a simple way to customize the loading indicator to match your unique company branding. You can select the stroke width, background color, and indicator color. And finally, you can set a status bar color in web apps. You can now define a custom status bar color for web apps, adding a polished touch to your application. Note, this will only be visible for progressive web applications and in a Safari browser. Next, you can now read documents from reference actions. We've added a new action to read a document from a reference. This allows you to load a document to get specific information, like a user's profile or a product's detail, just when you need it. This feature can enhance the performance and overall user experience of your application. And on top of this, we've had a lot of other improvements in August. For example, real-time collaboration is now possible on design systems, for the teams and enterprise plans, We've added a new warning to show you when your custom code is overriding a Flutterflow dependency. Custom code validation is now optional when starting a new build or downloading your APK. We now support query parameters for post and put and patch APIs. And you can now define a submit type for text fields. This along with a lot of improvements that you can find in our feature email. For our feature releases in September, we started with a new widget. A multi-select dropdown that allows users to choose multiple options from a list. For example, in an Upwork style application, you can select all the skills you have as a designer. You can set the initial configuration, all multi-select options, and edit translations for all of your drop-down elements. This new widget allows you to build more sophisticated and user-friendly experiences for your customers. Next up, we have the reorderable list. To use this feature in your app, add a list view to your project and toggle reorderable on. A reorderable list allows users to rearrange items based on their preferences or needs. Note, this feature can't be used if you have Influence Scroll enabled and does require dynamic children. This UX feature has been shown to boost user engagement and time spent inside an application. Next up, we now support Firebase Performance Monitoring. To add this to your project, head to Settings, Firebase, and Toggle on Performance Management. By proactively addressing these issues early, you can enhance user experiences and boost engagement. This powerful tool provides real-time performance data to help you identify and resolve performance issues. Next, we've added some new big upgrades to working with pin codes in Flutterflow. First, we've added a new action for clearing the pin code field. Next, you can now define a default keyboard type to be shown when using the pin code widget. 
so it's even easier to build a smooth and intuitive pin code interaction for your users. Next up, you can now add your own custom image for 404 errors. With this extra touch, even your error pages can reflect your brand's unique identity. You can find this new option under Settings and App Assets, and select the error image that best matches for your application. Next, we've added a new deployment history to show you the date and time and status of your previous web and mobile deployments. This makes it that much easier to track the status of your deployment and revert back to a previously successful version. You can find these options under Settings and Web Publishing or Mobile Publishing and Deployment History. Finally, our Choice Chips widget just got a big upgrade. You can now wrap your Choice Chips widgets in the layout selection. You can define border radius, color, and width for both selected and unselected Choice Chips. And you can define a disabled chip color. With these enhancements, you can craft a more tailored user experience and align to your unique brand aesthetic. And we concluded our September upgrades with a few more improvements that you can read in our feature email, including offering Canvas Kit support, being able to display images and PDFs from Bytes, and having an updated run, test, and publish menu, along with a whole lot more. Finally, for some non-product related updates, we held our first developer conference live in New York City at One Liberty Plaza. Thank you all to those who attended. We had over 100 plus in-person attendees and 4,800 attendees over our live stream. We gave out awards to our top apps and community members and got to celebrate our progress. And we can't wait to do it again next year. Next up, we also announced Flutterflow 4.0, which has its own feature video that I'll link below. In this release, we announced some key developer first features. First, we now have a new marketplace where we can buy and sell items such as templates, components, and custom code. Second, branching is now live and currently available in our team's plans. Currently, we're only supporting branching off of the main branch of a project, and we only support merging into main. However, many more improvements to come here. With branching, you can resolve conflicts individually or accept an entire branch into your project. Next up, we launched automated testing, which allows you to set up consecutive test steps for your application and automate QA. Cloud functions for powerful functionality right inside Flutterflow. And something we're really excited about, which is Flutterflow on iPad, which is now live in the App Store. You can now build cross-platform applications using only a tablet. And finally, a screenshot generator to save you hours of time manually creating dummy data. You can now get easy screenshots of all the product sizes that you need to submit to the App Store. That's all the updates we have for this video. We'll see you in the next one.